Sorry about that, guys. I know the transition go. And that snow out there got on my screen. talk about it guys while I make myself some tea in the microwave let me see why I talk so much manipulation is happening in the earth so much mess is happening in the earth so much hidden, hidden agendas that is about to come out this year. A lot of you, you're not aware and you're lost to see what these people them go do to we upon the earth. Watch now for the one world order because that already set up already. You remember from back in the day we used to hear about them thing there? And no people used to say, well, they gotta come, gotta come now. We don't say nothing go on. Well, you don't see all of the sign them now. They, they, you know, so the, you know, so the whole entire world. The yeah, idea was so affected by COVID. And one thing never to come and lick the earth so bad. And everybody have to submit to it. And if you didn't submit to it, you were, you, you were a, a deviant. You were the problem child. You are society's problem. And then start make you, you, you suffer. And you start get all um, cussed down. You start get beat down in society um, by people on the job. People start to cuss you. Who do you think you are? You're in danger in the lives of these people. And when you take a stop, it's the one that got the shot that spread the COVID. Well, I'm telling you right now. Thank God bless the Lord of my soul. COVID never catch me from since COVID been out. You hear me? Never catch me. But I tell you something. The people that with the shot, I all of them when they're on me, catch COVID. And then we get the shot first. And then catch COVID more than once. And me they're on them, they breathe in here. And God never make me get it. Me they run in the breathing ear. Me see people my job get COVID. What me they work with side by side. Get COVID. More than once. I'm me not catch it. But me tell about God in the season of our life. And in now. The things to come. The diseases upon the land. If you are not having me on Chicha TV on the score on a gram. Make sure you follow me there. Because I share a lot of content. A lot of news. A lot of news. A lot of. I share a lot of pages over there. In my story. Because I show you guys that there's so much going on. And a lot of us, we're sitting here stuck on these mix-up things. I'm not saying you can't watch mix-up. But we got to spread our minds out. We got to start actually seeing world news. And we got to start actually seeing the impact that is about to come to our country that we live in. The things and the changes that are about to come. The laws and the policies that have been voted in. Who the leaders are and their motives and, and, and their decisions for where you are. It will impact us greatly. This world have more control than you think. People who have money, many have manipulated and gotten their, themselves in places. And, 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 and people are in prison and all different places that ain't did a crime, but somebody pinned it on them. And for some reason, they spent 40 years in prison, 37 years in prison, 20 years in prison. I have shared at least four of those things recently that just happened. All these cases, all these, these things that are corruption within our society. When we look in Jamaica right now, and we see Jamaica and the corruption and our people don't get justice after all that we've been through. But yet we fight each other. We always find ourselves right back to that place of control and slavery mentality. Where we don't build each other. We don't see the bigger picture. We're stuck on me, 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 I me. Mean, because we've been through a lot so we feel selfish. But I'm here to encourage you. God's will is not that when we go through things, we become selfish and self-absorbed. No. Now I can see what my sister been through. I will hold her hand. Now I can see what my brother been through. I can hold his hand. And if you come over here and you try to bring division among us, we're going to pile up against you. That is how protection of each other is actually supposed to be. But many don't care about that. Big up yourself, Woolery. Many don't see that. Now they're taking books out of the schools. Library and everything. They don't want you to know the truth. And if you're not careful as a guardian and as a parent, you go along to get along. We're not going along to get along. If, if Rosa Park went along to get along. Luch, big up yourself. 
Where would you and I, the black people, be? Where would you and I be? I'm going to sweep my tea. I want to know. Talk to me in the chat. Where would we be if a woman didn't stand up and said, enough is enough? You know what I mean? Where would we be today if a woman of melanin features didn't stand up and say, I no longer want to get to the back of the bus or stay on the back of the bus. I no longer want to feel like I'm not human like everybody else. I don't want to be treated this way. I don't deserve it. And re regardless of the repercussions, somebody always has to suffer for the rest of us. It's always been from the beginning of time. The prophets of God suffer. Some people are beheaded for Christ. But that testimony carries on for generations to come. Look at what Jesus did for us. That is for centuries and centuries and centuries. And until the end of time, that story can never die. This is why the Bible is still the number one best-selling book of all time. And no matter how much authors come out and write books and they are all on the best-sellers list and all these things, the Bible will still be the number one book. Why is one book so powerful if it's fake? We know that the word of God was written by man but inspired by God. And just like many of you, when you go to church and you hear the pastor preach and you know that that word is for you and God gave you a word, was it not inspired by God? Isn't that a man speaking it? God uses man in the earth. Some of you, you're not open to Christ and the things of Christ, so you don't know when God sent a messenger. How will the people hear unless there's a preacher and a teacher? Hmm. And half of you are not walking in your gift. So how will you hear? You're not walking in anything that God told you to walk in. You're not even listening to his voice. You're making money right now. You're, you're trying to build your life, your career, and God is not really in it. But if he was dry in it, you know, you would have already got the bus you needed. See, the bus you think you're going to get is the bus that's going to destroy you. God ain't going to give you no bus that's going to take you out of his presence. He's not that wicked. After time, we go on and we search for things. And we want the bus every other way. And we sneak and we do. I'm going to tell you, as a young person, I've done it all. And we want to do everything. And we want to da, 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 da. But it always comes back. There's no success when God is not in the business. What fulfillment do you have to be rich and still on drugs? To still be so lost where you cannot find peace even in the crab legs you eat every day. And the mansion you live in and the millions you got can spree and you can go anywhere in the world and you don't have to work a day in your life because you're a billionaire but yet you're the one who overdosed and die. I want to know what the problem is. If money was a fixer of all things emotionally, spiritually, then why we got so many suffering people? And why when it all comes to a head, they always try to find something spiritual, someone spiritual to help them. Because men will always recognize there's something more than this flesh. However, you have lost your way. So on the search for Obia man and a wuzu kuzu and bali bali and all these things on the search for. And you have forgotten God. And remember generations before that have forgotten God that had children and children and children. When the message of God is not, is not prolonged. That paganism, that attitude, that sinful nature. Why you not teach your kids about the things of God? What you think they're going to become? The world becomes their teachers. So now the libraries are being taken out of the school. And some people are sitting back like, yeah, oh yeah. You know what I said? Anything they teach them, I'm Yeah, 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 yeah. They have taken out history out of the books. They are putting kids touching each other sexually in the books. And you're telling me it's appropriate for you to teach my kid about sex, beyond sex ed? I listen to me. Sex ed is simple. Let me tell you all. I, you don't even need to teach my kids sex ed. I'm the parent. I will do the teaching, the, be the birds and the bees. You don't need to tell my child about no options of sex. Because my child should not... Be in any sexual activity or affiliation with any child. I mean, I want a teacher tell my child about that. All you need to tell them about is how the condom works if sex comes into play. Protection, diseases. You need to tell them the truth about what sex can bring. Pregnancy. Don't tell my kid about dating nothing. It's not your place. And they are not of age. Only need to leave these people, kids alone. Up in these schools. You are so godless, but you're trying to teach my kid? You are allowed to put whatever you want in the schools, but I'm not allowed to tell my kid whatever. Listen, leave my kid. Don't do it. 
And parents sit back and you have no idea what's going on. But yet you go into school and you can see racism perpetuating among the teachers that's teaching your, your kids sex ed. These same teachers is racist out here doing these things to these kids in colleges, in high schools, in middle schools. And sex is all y'all want to talk about. For justification of everything. We don't want to have no sex talk. Period to the period. We ain't finna have no sex talk. Stop talking about sex with my kid, bro. Teach my kid real history, bro. This is why some parents homeschool. And their kids are just A-level kids. Better than the ones that have been taught in school. Honestly. And for those parents who take that role. God bless you because you got to be smart to do that. Before you're just at skipping jaw and put your child in a school, maybe you should read about that school and what their belief system is and, and the curriculums they actually teach your kid. And y'all want to sit up in here and promote foolishness and not be knowledgeable. When you can't read and comprehend, your kids end up in these foolish positions. And then you mad five, six, seven years later when you find this out. Because somebody having a sideline conversation that you nosy about. But if you was bright enough, sensitive enough, alert and knowledgeable and wise enough, you would have taken that initiative as a parent to check out what they're doing with your kids. You run up in your house, all of a sudden your kids start acting funny in the room. You wondering what's going on. All of a sudden, your kid go to school and pick up these things. And all of a sudden, when you look at a the tablet, they open there watching porn. Where they get their attitude from? Where they get this behavior? When you go in them book, you realize, say, hey, they teach them sex position or something. This is not a lie. This is facts. Now they're curious to go search for that sex position. Because they're at a stage that they're being taught. And they're gullible. And they're sucking like a sponge. Some of you, you play any music around your kid. And you wonder why your child turned out to be a thief in the night. Let's talk about it. A thief in the night. We are manifestors. We have power in our own lips to speak things into existence. I know somebody in here can tell a story of when they spoke something and it happened and they were shocked. This is why parents, you cannot sit around and degrade your kids. And tell them that they're not good for nothing. You speak that insecurity in their life. You speak that suicidal attitude in their life. Because all they hear of you badgering that child. No, they run into society downtrodden and taking that out on everybody. They either get angry in society. They're the tyrants in society. They're the ones that won't get help and it's prideful. Because nobody helped them. And for so many others that are affected and in different ways. And we want to sit there and glorify fault and foolishness. And our children, the future, are withering away. The schools don't want to teach you that slavery is even real anymore. That it was real. And that even in modern day, there's modern day slavery, honey. Don't get it twisted. Do your research. There's modern day slavery. Enough for on the camera that our sister come up here. They live slave life. Not because they don't have a noose around their neck doesn't mean they're not being enslaved. When you're working and you're not being paid properly, when you're being taken advantage of for a blue penny or two and you have to do hard labor, you don't get no favoritism. You don't get nothing extra. You're being mistreated. <laughs> and for our sake, if there is any level of investigation, half of those companies would be in violation. Have you ever seen how some of these Jamaicans live? But it's not only Jamaicans. Chinese come and work too. Africans come and work. This is a worldwide trade, baby. Some people are abducted from their cities in places like Africa. And they're taught um, to dog sell their bodies and they're, 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 they go on the street and they become beggars for their pimps. This is not a, this is not a joke. People actually abduct people to sell them. We all know this is a big trade in America and all over the world, especially places like Africa. That's a big, you know what I'm saying, place. And when you get lost in these sex slaves and you get in, in sex trade, you, you know, you, 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 you can't never be found again. I mean, if they don't find you within that 24 hours, 90% of these girls, they're gone. 
From deaths to rapes to being tied up to dying to not being, you know, fed in basements. I'm just telling you, the sex trade is big business in America. The underground sex trade, the judges, the lawyers, all the big shots are a part of it. Why? They can't catch half of them and why they don't get caught because they are with the big dogs. They're in bed with the big people, the lawmakers, the policy makers, the big dogs, the cat chores. They're the, with the dice players. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not with the three people. They're not one and two. They're up there so. This is why they don't get caught. And when they get caught, they get away. Somebody in the back pain willing to pay a hundred thousand. Somebody in the back willing to pay a million. Want to know? Cause them a world is secret for the judges. And if anybody get them locked up, and if they get locked up, they're getting bailed out. If anybody get them locked up, guess what? They coming out of jail. And you wondering who they snitched on? Baby, they ain't snitched on nobody. They keeping everybody in their mama secret. That's what's good. That's what's really good. And God forbid, when you involve sexuality in it. For those who are mad with their wives and you're sleeping around with the man and the men are holding your secret. So now you got to shut your mouth for sure. Living that double life. Some of you police officers are locking people up for drugs, but you the same one that go home every night and smoke crack. Why you do it? As a matter of fact, there's a video. Let me see. Let me see a video I show you. Perfect example. And guys, please make sure you guys are watching because I just showed a video. I just shared a video. Well, I think I watched it. Maybe not shared it. A video of a police officer that showed up at a home. And when the police officer showed up at the home, the police officer was so geeked out from drug talk, from drug use. So let me see. I'm sure I'll find the video. I'll let you guys see it. Once again, it's in, um, indisputable. Um, I respect that platform very much. One of the one of the platforms I watch 90% of the time now. I don't watch a lot of other stuff anymore. Honestly, I just watch stuff that is informative to me, that's relevant right now in society. I want to be aware of what's going on in the world. When you know when 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 we are not aware, we get blindsided by things and all of a sudden we are shocked. Why are you shocked about the things that God been say? Why are you shocked? And we wonder why the devil ever catch you in the middle of the night. All right, see the video. Police, they showed up uh, intoxicated. I kid you not. Let me just go to the video. I am not The police, yes, sir, is geeked out. He's so geeked out. Let me show you. Let me show you what he's doing. I, I I demonstrate it. He's over in the corner and he's doing this. It's so visible that he's geeked out. Like he's so visible that he's high. And and we know that they man marijuana now. And if it's marijuana, he's showing off his lace with that fentanyl or that coke or something. Because if y'all didn't know, fentanyl is that new drug. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about why in Jamaica now there's a bunch of killed kids down here that are pill poppers and drug addicts. Talk about why a society like Jamaica ain't got no help. But yet, half of our society people down here committing crimes got mental health issues. But yet we don't have no models prepared for the young people. But you see them in the man rigor, rubbing and scrubbing and them have the cup of drink, a party. And they can be in the best outfits. But we got leaders down there that don't see the reason for many mental health institutions. And rehabilitation of our youth. Is that what the future of Jamaica is? And you wonder if God is coming back. I am here to remind you, people, I know you're comfortable, and I know life has been good for you now, because the separation is not what it used to be for some of us, right? Glory to the Lamb of God for that. We have not forgotten who we are or where we come from. But how have we gotten so comfortable in life? We don't see what's going on, and we now start fence up with, with garments, and, and, and really take a look, start looking, and take out with binoculars, and start paying attention to our kids, and family members, and what's going on. We don't want to hear nothing. Because we are moved by foolishness. 
and facing yourself, facing where you haven't been productive, where you have been blinded, is an issue for all of us sometimes. But you prefer to be up the mix-up side, so keep it on stepping. Because over here, we have the hard talk, real talk conversation. We live in a place called reality. And there's so much to come, especially in this year. Some of you are going to be shocked. And I keep encouraging you, you know. A lot of you. Find back on the place with God. Because a blind man cannot lead a blind man. They both fall in a ditch. I know some of you, you have the belly that hurt you right now. The anxiety that kill you. Because you know you're one of them that acted like God didn't even exist in the last few months of your life. Your anger is not for people. Your anger is for yourself. Go cry it out before the Lord is forgiven. You don't run around and get that attitude with people because you ain't doing what God said. And that's really where you where you mad at. You mad at you. That you allow other somebody to surpass you. When God gave you the vision, God gave you the gift. And you sat here in your comfortability. And now you want to be mad when God moved past you. But let me remind you. He's so good and loving and, for, and forgiving that he hasn't changed his mind about you. All you got to do is put that pride aside and open your lips and repent. Because that's the same pride that's been keeping you away from him. You hear me? I don't care how much money people make. How much prosperity we have. Remember, all of us, if we don't see it until the end, we're going to be six feet under. We're not going to make it one day. Because this body was going to die one day. No one thinks of tomorrow or life after death. Everyone just thinks of now. I beg to differ. <laughs> There's too much things in this earth, unexplainable, to act as though the spiritual don't exist. I know they desensitize spiritual things a lot now in movies and Disney Disney movies to make it act like witches ain't real. Yay. Hope your work ain't real. Demons ain't real. It's a joke. If I can let the people of God think it's a joke, then they don't know their power. They're now desensitized. They don't even believe that it's witchcraft that's working in their life. It's the high la bam bam when they carry and drink their day. They didn't even know so they can bring in demons. All they put them when they can and they also didn't even know. But you know what? I'm going to go on because you know they're all living in the flesh. Some of you have an Isla Bamba right now in your bed corner. And you wonder why hooks you come right here at night time. And the incubus and succubus can't lift up off of you. And bad luck can't tap take you. Let me tell you the same thing right now. The Bible said those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. If God was flesh and anything in our dealings in our flesh and fleshly talk. Why would he tell us these things? So why are we acting unaware that spiritual things exist? Some of you don't even believe in miracles anymore. And you have got church. I you carry the big old sore foot back at you. God, me believe you, so you can't do this. You can't heal me, God. You know me, you can't heal me. me, me you know, but me know. Yeah, long, once you give me life one more day, I shall be fine. And you're satisfied worshiping the God of the heavens and the earth. The one that is big and mighty with a sore foot. Woman of God. Man of God. Don't you know who you serve? Don't you know who you serve? And we are Christians, huh? That's why I said powerless. This is why the enemy wants you to go to church every Sunday in your pretty long dress. <laughs> Cause so long you don't have no power, you're not gonna wait. Mama, church attendance will never be nothing to save you. God. Don't you see the world? Is here to desensitize the power of Christ and to let you know that it doesn't exist and it's not true. Don't you know that? People say that's fake. Oh, that's fake. That's fake. That could never be so. Ah, never so. And for those who God has worked miracles in their life, they like to pretend like God and did nothing. Cause if I want new man, I want new job, I want new something. Only, you know, when they find the good things, them they turn around God and everything. Yeah, cause when God bless them, you know, they only come once in a blue moon. So they don't know God's goodness, you know, one fall upon stone, rocky stone, one fall upon good side, one fall upon the mountain top, one at the hill corner, one at the back of the road, one fall on the sun. We them fall everywhere, darling. They fall in. 
Mm -hmm. What is the soil that you carry? Is it just dry rock? Woman of God, you go to church every Sunday and typical your feet say, you twitch one, come one, one time. Yeah, 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 you. Who are the ghosts still are moving at you? No, you're as dry as a chip and God is calling you up out the back seat and he called you to the front and he say, woman of God, why are you sitting in the back when I have called you in the front? Man of God, why are you sitting there? You're not pleasing me because you're attending service. Your religion will not save you. Relationship will make you submit to God and do what he wants you to do even when you're anxious about it, even when you're afraid about it and don't know religion not gonna get you nowhere, baby. But in the back seat at church. It's when the heart is clean, you can work for God. You don't have to fight them when they fight you. Because you know that your mission is for God. So you're not supposed to contend with people. Sometimes we do these things and God already tells us to stop it. But yet we do it. So some of the suffering we undergo is us, not Him. Right? And when are we going to take responsibility for the roles we play in our own demise? Spiritually. Some of you, you're getting education. You're getting the best house, the best car. You're doing everything for your kids and you're stepping out on God. You know, like, step out upon them. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Step out upon them. Yeah! And all that is good. But yet you have not stepped out spiritually. Not one time to attend church. Not one time to refresh your relationship with God. Not one time for the refilling. Yeah, you ain't get the Holy Ghost when I went 13 and a half. But remember, say, Francis, then you never go to church and everything. You need a rekindling and a retouch. One Holy Ghost, many refillings. Why you do eat? Dry chips, God no want it. When we had eat chips, we have to one dip that cheese. We want little, little drinks. We wash them with shorter. Why are we dead like this out here? We are cow. We say, believer of God. Woman of God, man of God. Why are you not laying your hand on the sick that they recover? Why you have sore foot and you're sitting on the call the name of Jesus? The same name what Jesus raised from the dead. I want to know which God you serve. Because the God there, I don't know him. That God you serve, I don't know him, he's dead. Where is the people of God that serves God? The one who see miracles. Do miracles. The one who used to pray and lay with hand. And God straighten her foot and back. God take out demons. People can't talk, he make them talk. Them can't hear, he make them hear. They can't see, he make them see. When Jesus walked the earth, he performed miracles. Why are we so deadly, deadly? Every Sunday, hundred, 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 Get a good church downtown on a whop on a hundred, beat the devil, beat the devil, beat the devil, beat the devil. The devil that beat you. Because you can't tell when the last time God did something for your life. In your life. You can't even give a testimony. But yet, you can't testify about the business. You can't testify about the man. And the woman. What you have. And the picnic. And the this and the that. But when God does something for you. You can't come out and tell you know me God. God don't want to do for me. God know me. That's why God have to lick down some of and I never come when you come like a some doubt in Thomas and never believe nothing. Blessed are those that have believed and have not seen. Blessed are those man who believe by other people's testimony and is convicted by what God has done through someone's life. I see this the lady Shadeen, I think that's her name. The Christian lady shared a testimony for somebody she prayed for. A lady with her entire foot. Nam out. So bad and deplorable. You might not be able to look at the picture. It looked like gangrene, eat it out, cancer, anything was say, nyam out and drop her foot and cut her foot and foot off the amputate. That is no healing coming back for that woman. And in a matter of no time, when you look, all the two of them gone too. When you look, God healed the woman's foot and the two of them come back and everything. The foot lock up. Even I could hardly believe that God moved so expeditiously. And I had to laugh because I said, yeah me, my God, you know, my daddy Jesus is working all over the world. Let me talk about it. Let me go push that in video for you now. Look upon God you now. Lord God, not so Jesus. Are you that God?
And you talk about real dance, I see you get up and dance. When you see God at work, you say, God, what you? God! What you ashamed for? What you, what you quiet for? When you went to your club and you wind up and you put your head top, you never went quiet. So what now? Sushi bushy you? What now? What now? Eh? Me believe in a miracle. And we too dead out here. Some of you, you're going to need your gift in the end time. Don't be one to be caught in those years of tribulation on the earth the Bible speak of. I want to be caught up in the rapture. I don't want to be one left here to suffer great trials. Because then you know it's life and death. Henny, you will have no favor. You can't use your body parts or your money at that time. Some of you, if you don't have the chip in your arm, you won't eat food. <laughs> and God, they want to act like you don't exist. But they will all see. Some of you, your grandmother would roll over in the grave because now you picked up a man that don't even believe in God. Hmm? And now you let him lead you astray and now all of a sudden, I don't know if I believe in God anymore. I believe in the universe. I believe in the stars and the moon when it turn left. That means, uh, yeah, me, it go there so, and that there so, my life and my horoscope and me. Yeah, the one day. You know, my horoscope went tell me this morning, say, me, me ain't supposed to be have a man, I mean, had a man. I what the mother for me to any horoscope. Let me go pray my prayer. You know, since me, me love God, I me work up here at the same time. You know, hey, want to go to church one Sunday, you know. I want to go to church one Sunday. But you know what? You know what? My horoscope tell me, say, today it's going to be gloomy. So you know what? Me not about to go to church. As a matter of fact, you know, so we have one bad dream last night. I'm mean, after go call. Pam running so become a no pam. Can't tell me the things cause she hear God. Mark who pam not even go to church. You know? Pam not be no holy ghost. But you are got to pam and I pam your solution. So my only when God done it know. Cause him know the secrets that you put under your pillar. You know the secret sin thing why you put at the door corner. You know when you send bad lamb for sister Paula. You know when you ain't going like you drink the potion and the rest of them come come catch you and you go on like, oh, I wouldn't do it, that's not me. And you say, I had the goody goody, and you dress good and look good, and all these good things, and I already said, you want to try to kill the woman, female. man. Some of only thinks that judgment is going to be for the murderers and killers. No, do, 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 do. Judgment is going to be for you, the man thief, too. Judgment for you who see your children going on the wrong path, but because you want to live vicariously through your kids, you're not telling them when they're wrong. Judgment. God. You hear me afraid if you have a one pop in the earth, yeah? Do you hear me afraid if you have a pit in the earth, I'm not on yet. Because this is not community raising your kid anymore. The community not give a rats behind boy your pitney. The community touch up on a pitney, take advantage and do our sick now. You know, see the level of perversion around. Half of you, the community is a family. Which oftentimes cause the worst hurt and pain in people. I 
I will no longer exist in a weak place. I will stand passionately in the power of the Holy Ghost. And who vexed you got to talk to your mother or Jesus? Because if you had the fire like me, you cannot sit still. It's like a fire. You know, you're born. <laughs> you're dead because you have not acknowledged God. <laughs> Don't be mad at me because I got life. Don't be mad at me because I got the energy. Don't be mad at me because I got the passion. Don't be mad because I'm willing to deny myself. The foolery, the clout, and the money for God. Don't be mad at me when he prospers my loins. Don't be mad at me when he provides what I need. Don't be mad. Because what is for me is for you. Because what he has ordained for you, no man can take it. But some of you will never get it because you're acknowledging everybody else as God, not the God himself. Why you do it? God will no longer give you a handout. You're disrespectful, fool. He sent people your way, you don't want to hear it. He sent help your way, you don't even thank him. You think you're so obligated to his mercy to wake up, don't you? Very cocky and prideful like Satan. Hence why he had to be kicked out of heaven. Pride does come before destruction, you know. It does. So when you see a young girl, I humble herself, now God, let me live. And let me walk and go through. Because I choose not to be dead like some of you. Some of you, you live on the testimony of the past. Talk about what God used to say to you. If God ain't speaking to you now, you are a dead foe. Let me tell you, me not care what God tell 20 years ago. We serve a now God. Get out of here with that. That's how the enemy trick you to think that you're comfortable enough to talk about the 15-year testimony. It's gone. God want to work now on you. He want to restore something new. He want to put a fire in your belly. But you're sitting over there choosing money and fame over him. But he shall bring you down in due season if you not repent. Anyone that we, he might go bring you down. Because his glory, once again, <laughs> He doesn't share with anybody. And he will not war for it. He won't war for it. Not forced you to give it to him. That's why I want to choose. Because I don't want it to be a situation to knock me on my face as a young girl. To make me have to serve him then. Broke me back, spin me back, and then all of a sudden, me feel like I can't get no man again. I'm married. And so I go on a church called Bad Life Take Me. Honey. Let's not go to God when we're old and broken and he can't use you. You're washed up. Don't come with your washed up self. He wants to use you now. When you're fresh and you got a little bit of funk in your, you know, a little bit of movement. You gotta come to God. Hey, God, may I come now with a, I, I mean, no, may I 66, but me when they come one time, run us so, up. Yeah, yeah. Well, see me, I know God. See me, I know God. And I saw you, they walk. Your foot are broke. Your back are broke. Your neck are broke. Your, your spine, I broke everything, I broke pain. Yo. God can be able to use you. He can't only use you for the little prayer right there. So. Jesus Christ. Why you do it? Young man, I call upon you because you're strong. Being young doesn't mean you're giving up your life. Doesn't mean you're going into the pulpit and putting on a white garment and get on a mic. It means when wherever you are, Acknowledging Christ in our conversations. Interjecting with a little bit of Jesus. Can bring great impact. Having a conversation about food. Imagine turning that into this Lord's Supper. You know, analogies. A little analogy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So don't act religiously, baby. It's not the church attendance I'm talking about. We're talking about in any scenario, he's present for you and me. Don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed to speak about him. He's a bad mama jama. I love sure. The man of style, I mean, I like style and pattern. What you talking about? Look on God now. God! Yeah, you! Stop!
style and pattern. You can't style God. You can't style him. All of you know where they play, play. You know what I said to you? Know? God forgive them because they know not what they do. No found in one to do. And the damage you know cause. Pan people are on yourself. So why do we forgive you? Because know? we don't know what we do sometimes. You and I. Chatters. Be encouraged. God wants his people to come back to where they had power and know that they have dominion. We have succumbed to being weak. We come and the devil give us sore foot. Every problem, cancer, everything, and we not even go to the prayer warrior them. Why have we accepted these sinful things? These things that God tells us we have power over. We are trusted doctor more than daddy Jesus. Why you do the physical things, which is important. There's a spiritual aspect of care as well. We have physical care, but we got spiritual care. You can't care for the physical only. You got the doctor's appointment and everything, but you're not call for the father to drop in the spiritual things that when it manifests in the spiritual, it comes in the spiritual and the physical. Because a lot of things God have done in you already have, and then they will see it. Stop forgetting your spiritual side. Your spirit being in, a, in flesh. Your spirit man first. Put in a fleshly body. He knew you before you were born. Why are we acting like we don't know who we serve? Get back on the road and get back on the ball. God is calling you. The young people are waiting. Do what God say. Humble yourself. Day by day, step by step. Don't let nobody speak down to you about what you have done. They're not God. Even if they know your mistakes and they look at you sideways, remember, they're not God. And they, are, they have sinned just like you and I. You hear me? Because some of you think you're God. You think you have the authority to talk down to anybody, and you don't. You have the authority to tell them what they went do and who they went stay. Drunk crow, you don't have sin in your closet too. Why you do it? Let God do the work. Because remember, you're not that clean either. You're kind of dusty yourself. As a matter of fact, you're kind of rusty and weak. So you see, leave people alone. Leave them to God and make God do the work in the young people. Them. Stop for a run and tell the people to change their clothes before they tell them to change their heart. No, no place. And ask for some spiritual wisdom, some of you. You're running people out of church. Pray for some wisdom. At your age, you should know better. Stop talking down to the people them and provide love so they can see God. Some of you are the biggest problem in church. Cut that mess out and grow up. High time now. Time is wasting. Time is wasting. The experience is time to level up. You have gotten out of your word and you know the truth. And the young people can't tell. Come me young too. But the wisdom of God lied on me. And trust and believe the anointing is very heavy. There's no way for me to run. And I speak with the authority of Christ. And I decree a thing and it shall be so. Because he told us this. So let's stand in the word. And stop from back, back up and go on like we wiki wiki every day. Cut it out. Trials may come. Tribulation come. Weapons are formed. But they will not prosper. We don't know how long they will be formed for. But they will not prosper. Be encouraged. Hey guys, it's your girl Enik. One more time into this chit chat tea. Because over here, we exalt and glorify God. But most of all, we have the hard talk, real talk, conversations. Guys, make sure you follow me on YouTube. If you ain't hitting me there, please go subscribe to me on YouTube too. Like, we be putting on the content there too. Don't abandon me and all things now. Okay? Go on over to the mob group if you're not there. Go over to um, Chita TV underscore on the gram. Okay? Follow us there for content. Cause we be, we be, we, we, yeah, we be sharing stuff. We be sharing stuff all the time. Okay? So, follow me on our platforms. Please get a time to share this live. If you feel like this live will be a blessing to anybody, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it real. Let's keep lifting each other up, building each other up, holding your sister's hands when she's weak. We all we make mistakes. We all sin. But don't tear each other down. Encourage and empower your sister to get back up each time, your brother to get back up each time. Whoever it is next to you or around in your circle, do not discourage people against the things that are good. All right? Big up yourself. Goodbye.